If I were a musical note right now, I would be an A flat. Can you be an A flat with me? Da. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add a note. I'm going to add a C, which is a major third above an A flat. And uh, would you like to be a C with me? Da, da. C's, more. Da. Going very well. <laughs> and I'm going to add um, a G, uh, and that would make a, F, a flat major seventh chord, which is a, a pretty one uh, for this time of the day. So, one more time. Da, da. My name is Magda, and uh, I'm a musician. I was born in Athens, Greece, um, and I have a band called, very literally, um, Banda Magda. I write music, I compose music, I produce records, I teach workshops. And half of the year, I tour in North America, South America, Africa, Asia, and Europe. For me, A flat is yellow, your note. Your note, a C, is red, and a G is blue. It has always been like that. My music and my life uh, have been uh, deeply influenced by a thing I have called color graphene synesthesia. So basically, when I hear or think of a word, my inner eye sees it written in specific colors. So every letter has a distinct color, and uh, consequently, everything is a palette of colors. Every song, every day of the week, every month of the year is a palette of colors. Every name is a palette of colors. What's your name? Annika. Annika, can I call you Gary? <laughs> sure. Thank you very much. So Gary, for example, is a charcoal, Mustard with dashes of pink. Uh, Gary, apart from, uh, to me, uh, being like a charcoal with dashes of pink and mustard, Gary has all these, is made of all these particles, these puzzle pieces, very colorful. These particles make Gary, Gary. Maybe there's like a, a red circle right here, or a yellow triangle, or a green hexagon. In each particle, Gary feels a complete sense of belonging. Gary was born with one, the first one, and then every day there were more, more, more puzzle pieces added into the mosaic that is Gary. Gary is a unique work of art. And some of those pieces Gary feels so much belonging, like for example, uh, there is this um, green hexagon right here that represents uh, Gary's passion and love for Brazilian comic books from the 50s. Or there is this um, red circle, like right here, that um, represents Gary's memory, fond memory of... Trees? Of trees. Gary loves trees. <laughs> Theoretically, if Gary can take all those particles of the mosaic that is Gary and put them in a compass and then use this compass every day of Gary's life, then Gary would live Gary's unique, authentic, awesome story. But life doesn't make it easy for Gary because being unique is hard. Unique, by definition, is one of a kind. 
after a show or a performance, sometimes people will come and tell me, you're so unique. And I, I, I like it. I like, I like it. Why not? But uh, <laughs> thank you very much. But also, I'm a little confused because so unique is a little confusing. So unique. Can we, how much of unique can we be? Like a little unique or more unique or so unique? The question is, can we be completely unique? So I am so unique. In fact, I am so unique that I am also uncategorizable. In the music industry, being uncategorizable can be a challenge. Um, labels and booking agents have dropped us many times because we were uncategorizable. Uh, there was one major label at some point that wanted to sign us uh, only if I rewrote all my music into English so that it would be more marketable. I thought it was a stupid idea. Uh, complete lie, I didn't do it. Uh, and so our first album, instead of being our major label in English, this one, Amortella, uh, it was a self-release, an independent release of 11 French songs. And you know what, it did pretty well. Uh, it went on the Billboard charts, and uh, NPR called it one of their favorite world music albums, it was fun. And labels and booking agents, they still drop us and reject us, and I am so grateful. Because sometimes it's just more laborious to use an existing road rather than building actually your own. And sometimes if you use the existing road, it might lead you to a, a strange place where you have zero sense of belonging. And where Gary's vibrant, colorful puzzle pieces they start becoming gray and disappearing. There are some things I have found helpful in this road towards embracing and discovering your uniqueness. And, and one is um, limited resources, a recent discovery. For our third album, Tigre, uh, Tigre was intended to be this ambitious video and uh, audiovisual project. Uh, about courage and fearlessness. 14 music videos would convey the vibrancy, richness, and power and strength of the album and the music. And unfortunately, uh, our main financial backer disappeared right before we started. Nice. Uh, and so we couldn't move along with the plan. Uh, so it had to kind of like be DIY. Uh, which is a term that, as an independent artist, I'm pretty familiar with. Uh, but never to that extent of, uh, you know, we're planning to have a crew with film people and set designers, anyway. Um, so, I functioned as a producer, a director, a film editor, and a set designer. I drove a truck with all the contents of my apartment to basically a corner of an office, which we made into a studio. I placed a call on social media for fans, music students or video students, film students, um, to come as interns so we can have a crew. And I used the cheapest material possible to paint backdrops. That's a V-flat. That's Andy. Mm -hmm. uh, we painted every night the same V-flats uh, for the next set of the next day. It's around 4 a.m. probably. Um, we used everything we could find to convey the visual aspect of the album. These are branches that Megan brought from upstate that we painted. It's my clothes, <laughs> props, shoes, props, chairs, lamps, my neighbor's plants. Uh, any object or curio that was interesting that we could find like anywhere, we built a uh, 22 sets in six days. My limited resources led me to create something that was innately me, because I was compelled to look super close instead of like fantasizing about something that it, somebody else did. And through this process, I also discovered so much about my mosaic, my puzzle pieces. 
like this one that is the level of uh, perseverance I have in the pursuit of my dreams, or this one that is my love uh, being in a team and working in a team with a crew, and then this one that is love for design and for building, building anything. I fell in love with building things. And I'm thinking, where does it come from? Where, where, where do all those pieces come from? Can we trace it back? Why does Gary love comic books from Brazil from the 50s? And when did it start? Um, so I don't know about you, Gary, but uh, I could trace mine to around the age of 10. And uh, there is this amazing quote by the great uh, American film editor, Walter Murch. There is a developmental sweet spot around ages 8 to 12. Later on in life, if you can tap into what made you excited around the age of 10, you have more chances to be happy with what you do, because around the age of 10, you know enough of the world to have an opinion, but you're not an old enough to be swayed by the opinions of others. When I was 10, I played the piano, I searched for the perfect melody, I listened to a lot of world music and soundtracks, and when I was 10, Greece didn't feel enough. And so I used Legos, tons of them, obsessed. <laughs> and then I build houses, and then I build cities, and I build structures, and I build a world that had many, many, many more colors, more than existed at that point in my life. And so my question is, how can we as adults help 10-year-old Gary discover and embrace and accept and nurture Gary's uniqueness, Gary's unique mosaic? And how can we as adults make sure that 10-year-old Gary and also the 10-year-old Gary inside can keep those puzzle pieces vibrant and alive through adolescence, through the opinions of others, through life. Gary, uh, what kind of color do you feel like today? Orange. And what about you, Gary? Blue, blue orange and blue. Okay. Orange. Go for it. Da! So we'll do this. We'll do orange and blue to start with. And then when I raise my hands, we'll do something else. But let's do that first. Do. like that, just go to your color, your puzzle piece. Do it. Do <laughs> I say let's let's uh, let's live our story. Let's embrace the puzzle pieces that make us us. Let's put those puzzle pieces in a compass and let's make that compass the compass of our everyday lives. Thank you very much.